up here kind of picks it up the other side of the M1 as it sort of heads and it flows southwards, um, sort of um, past Pinkston and Selston, and then um, it becomes the county boundary at this point, and then continues Bangley Mill eastward and then around the east of Ilkeston, and then it flows between San Diego and Stapleford, um, Toton, and then comes out at the um, River Trent, pretty close to our um, Attenborough Nature Reserve. So um, that's where this is the why. Well, um, the um, the air wash that the word itself actually means wandering river, and that obviously refers back to the days when it could be a wandering river, when it was more sort of connected with its with its flood floodplain, really. Um, but it's uh, it is a really important area, um, and as most river valleys are, they're fantastic um, wildlife sort of corridors. Um, and um, birds will use them as migration routes as they move from one wetland to another. Um, and partly because we've got such a populated <laughs> area in sort of lowland Derbyshire and um, that, that um, Broxstow, um, it's it's really important for um, sort of people as, as, as well, well as wildlife. And that, that's where we sort of coined up the phrase green infrastructure. So it's really important sort of green infrastructure um, sort of feature. Um, Broxstow commissioned a green infrastructure strategy and you can see the arrow wash is very much um, sort of at, at the spine of all the green infrastructure. The arrow wash is the primary um, corridor as is the Trent, but all the secondary corridors c come out from from the arrow wash and also um, the um, biodiversity action groups um, bomb mapping works, um, you know, shows the arrow wash is one of the focal areas. Um, so in terms of um, another sort of important thing to mention is um, the sort of past um, of, the, of, of the river. It's sort of um, used to be known as, uh, you know, one of the sort of most polluted sort of rivers, really. Um, partly um, because industry was so sort of prolific um, and also, um, um, you know, due to, to sort of population, um, uh, you know, sort of um, overflows from sewage works and, and things. Um, but the situation has now sort of improved and, you know, it, it, it's set to, to sort of get even, get get better um, as, uh, as, as improvements are made. Um, so th this map here is quite interesting. That kind of shows, yeah, around Ilkeston where it all comes together in the valley. Cause you, you, at the centre, you've got the River Arrowash. On the Derbyshire side, you've got the Arrowash Canal. And on the Knox side, you've got the Nottingham Canal. Um, so, um, other than the, uh, as well as the um, sort of um, water bodies themselves, there's a mosaic of other habitats in the valley. Um, these include um, wet grasslands, um, often sort of termed sort of flood meadow. And they, these are often grazed, um, sometimes they're sort of cut for hay with um, aftermath grazing. And uh, it's quite important to say these aren't normally species rich grasslands, mainly because they're, they're really sort of fertile, um, but they do support sort of breeding waders, species such as snipe and black lapwing. Um, and also these um, wet grasslands are important for wintering, um, visiting sort of wildfowl, um, like resting and, and feeding areas for uh, sort of geese and barrack and hooper swans, widgeon and, and teal as well. Uh, Valley also supports some some species rich grassland, um, unimproved neutral grassland. Um, that these are areas that have escaped ploughing, um, etc. Et and um, that there's one in particular, um, at, um, Robin Axe Triple SI near Costall, and that's um, quite an unusual habitat because it's, um, it's um, the, the geology is sort of coal measures, and um, it's a special type of sort of new, um, neutral grassland. Um, so that's an important site. We've also got sort of marsh and swamp um, habitat. Um, essentially, these are always sort of close to the water table and they're uh, like the transitionary habitat between wet and dry land. Um, and rather than being dominated by grasses, you know, um, the sort of main plant components are sort of sedges and rushes and perhaps sort of herbs such as meadowsweet. Um, yeah, it was also important for ponds um, as well. Um, so sometimes these can be created by mining sub subsidence, um, and so some are sort of permanent in nature, 
and then you've you've also got uh, quite a few uh, term flashes which basically the hours they sound really essentially after a lot of rainfall daylight today you know they'll be getting quite wet and then if it's dry for a few weeks then that you know that the water will be gone but these are really important for places for for birds to feed uh, you know as as the mud sort of dries up um and the, the farmlands out in this uh, sort of area typically the small fields um permanent pasture lots of small holdings a um, lot of horse graze paddocks sort of near, near the towns and um, because the soils are so wet in the area and poor there's not so much sort of arable farming in, in this area and uh, there's good thick network of hedges due to the small field sizes and um, it's quite interesting to note if you see any areas in the Arawash Valley where there's kind of long straight field boundaries chances are they might be sort of restored open cast mining land because they wouldn't put the original sort of field boundaries back. Um, and then obviously we've got woodland and particularly wet woodland and scrub as well, which is uh, in my mind a really sort of overlooked habitat, um, but there are important areas in, in the valley. So um, in terms of um, sites, essentially, as expected really, all these sort of high quality habitat that's left is kind of picked up in the um, local wildlife site and triple SI sort of network. Um, all depends how you define the Airwash Valley, but I'd say there's at least six triple SIs, perhaps, perhaps a few more. And let's just say there's dozens of local wildlife sites, some of which have uh, I've lifted, uh, listed for, for the north side there. Um, in terms of um, priority species, um, obviously, um, Again, there's uh, you know there's a lot more than than's listed here, but um, the first group in obviously we've got riparian mammals, we've got bats, brown hare, harvest mouse, hedgehog. Um, in terms of birds, really important for barn owl, hunting barn owl often seen in the Awash Valley. Um, I've already mentioned waders and wintering wildfowl, and also we've got some of the kind of focal. Um, declining bird species like willow tit and um, turtle dove as, as well. Um, I haven't done the butterflies justice at all, but um, we've also got um, crayfish, um, fish species, and uh, you know the full suite of um, herpta fauna as well. So um, quickly, um, sort of onto um, water bowl. Um, back in uh, 2014, um, it was the, the Trust commissioned a full um, riparian mammal survey of, of the valley, um, which was funded by the People Trust for Endangered Species. Um, and that actually at the time revealed that waterfowl were doing really quite well in the catchment. So sort of booking, perhaps booking, you know, the sort of national declines. And in fact, it showed that um, about um, there's 58 sites surveyed, about 60 percent of them um, had um, likely um, water vol um, presence um, and obviously there's some areas that didn't have water voles um, th these were perhaps the more sort of isolated uh, sort of sections and then it sort of unexpectedly um, mink were, were seemed to be showing up in some of the, the sites um, where what water voles are which is quite surprising because normally they you'd expect them to be unfortunately sort of what wiped out um, so I think that the report sort of concluded that perhaps mink was only just starting to colonise th those areas, which um, um, which wouldn't be good news. Um, but I think certainly what we need is an updated survey of, of the whole valley, really. Um, and it also um, revealed um, there's very little known about water shoe and they were turning up um, quite, quite a lot throughout the whole valley. Um, so, so that's a good good news story as well. Um, so yeah, I think we desperately need a, an update survey um, and also, um, e, um, yeah, ju just to say as well, that w uh, certainly we, we received, we were very pleased to see, receive a sight of a water bowl on the Nottingham Canal only, only last week we sent like a 10 second video clip. So uh, it's really nice to, to hear they're still around in, on, on that stretch um, and um, yeah, they've come out of hibernation this year so uh, that's nice to hear. Um, so otters that the report um, questioned why, why perhaps they're not doing so well because they were basically only found at uh, two sites 
throughout the whole valley. Um, but it's worth, if you think about their um, sort of ecology, they uh, in some river valleys they can range tens of, of, of kilometres. So it might be just the case that, that there's, you know, sort of only one or, or, or two um, sort of, you know, pairs um, that, that often seen around Attenborough. So, you know, perhaps Attenborough and they, you know, they, they, they go up and down the, the, the valley from, from there. Um, and um, on a whole, the, the report mentioned that habitat's pretty, pretty, you know, pretty decent for otter, but there are some areas um, where there's a lot of grazing of, of the river banks, which will kind of limit the um, sort of, um, basically uh, limit the scrub from forming and, um, uh, you know, uh, limiting opportunities for resting and um, building sort of holes and, and that kind of thing. Um, crayfish, um, now um, they're present on our native white claw crayfish. I think we're all familiar with, with, with their plight, but they, they are actually present on the Arrowwash itself, round about Jacksdale, they're a confirmed breeding. And also they're on several tributary streams, so that's really good, good news. And I might be a little bit out of date now, but I believe that um, signal crayfish haven't um, been recorded in the Airwash Valley, so uh, you know we really hope that that, that continues. Um, right, so um, next up, I'm, I'm going to do just a, a little bit of a sort of whistle stop tour of the valley, if you like, from <laughs> from kind of um, Portland Park all the way down uh, to, towards Attenborough, um, and just mention a few of the key sites, and also have a look at some of the um, opportunity mapping. Um, and some of the projects that, that have been happening. Um, so I'll be starting at Portland Park, then I'll be having a look at our wash meadows, um, nature reserves, and then a um, quick, quick look around the Benley Viaduct area, and then a, a quick tour of some of the um, Boxdale Borough Council local nature reserves. Um, I think there was five listed there, um, and they all connect um, so some of them are a little bit away, um, as you can see uh, from the Irish on this map, but they are all connected um, via um, tributaries to to the Irish. Um And also, oh yeah, it's, it's worth um, mentioning um, the Irish Valley trailers as well. Um, even though this is a um, now completed project, it was a really important one. And uh, if, if you live and, uh, you know, sort of, um, you know, walk, walk in the area, you, you'll be aware of this. Essentially, it's um, it, it's basically connecting the communities on both sides of the Arrow Wash through, a, you know, a, um, a whole sort of valley sort of trail, really. There's lots of circular walks from the Derbyshire side and the North side. Um, so this was really, you know, an important project for for the area. And also um, there's a leaflet that explains about all the important wildlife sites that, that people can go to, um, uh, you know, ad, ad, as they walk, walk the trail. Um, so first stop, um, Portland Park. Um, this is, um, yeah, um, this is um, owned um, by Ashfield District Council, um, it's triple SI. Um, park, park on the whole covers uh, about 15 hectares. There's 10 hectares of of woodland, um, including a, a wooded valley, which um, is a tributary of the Arrowash. Um, the, some of the woodlands are ancient in origin, um, and um, it supports a, a wide range of birds, great spotted woodpecker, tawny owl, nuthatch tree creeper, and the, there's an important series of, sort of ponds and ponds and wetlands as well. Um, there's a, it's also um, well known for its um, important grasslands, um, again triple SI, some, some of these are on uh, magnesium limestone that, um, and are formed on former quarried areas. Um, and um, there's also, um, back, back to, 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 this is one of the main ponds um, and there's currently a, a project underway with um, Trent Rivers Trust and Ashfield District Council, they're working together to restore about 120 metres of channel and um, reconnect, um, and reconnect sort of 500 metres of channel that's, um, it, it sort of skirts around these ponds here. Um, it's quite interesting, I think um, that the, the ponds 
um, essentially they, they were like almost like a sort of tourist destination in Victorian times and people used to sort of paddle in them um, and it's it, there's like a bypass channel which where, where the improvements are, are, are gonna gonna be um, taking place but the, it's quite complicated what happens with the water there's an overflow into the ponds there's also a culvert beneath the ponds so it kind of splits three ways and then it all comes back together at the other side of the pond so it's uh, Quite, quite an interesting setup there. Um, but anyway, the plans have been drawn to um, for these channel improvements and um, a um, consultation has took place and there's a lot of support for the project and it's gaining momentum and all the planning permissions and consents have been applied for. So hopefully it'll be a project that will be delivered uh, this, this coming winter. Um, Arosh Meadows, um, this is the um, Derbyshire not Nottinghamshire Plus nature reserves. Um, essentially, it's this it's this area in, in blue, um, and the connectivity map here shows that they're already well connected. So, any work we'll be doing here will be about um, more focused on basically making the, these um, sites, you know, sort of better in, in in themselves rather than um you know sort of joining them up although if there's any opportunity to 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 add to them then uh, you know that that, that would um, be, be of benefit um the, these sort of purple areas are two of the um local nature reserves of brinsley headstocks and also hall park and as you can see these are connected to the arrowwash by a much more kind of fragmented wetland habitat um so the the reserves themselves um obviously you know really important um for the sort of bird species um resident species such as water rail and reed bunting and and that black wing and some rarities pop by as well we've had the uh, spoonbill in in the past and about 10 um hectares of it is in um knots um known as older car flash and then the rest of it is uh, in derbyshire um, and uh, total site is about 42 hectares in size and um, we're currently um, both trusts are working with the Trent Rivers Trust and there's a feasibility study underway um, basically looking at how we can improve the wetland habitats and that will look at all sorts of factors rainfall and um, ge geometry and, and uh, all the contours and, and stuff and um, we're going to be that will inform where to target some work and that could be sort of on the channel itself maybe some backwaters um or it could be you know sort of playing about with the levels of, on the actual reserve as, as well so you're basically holding water um you know creating um more ponds and, and scrapes um throughout throughout the site so that's uh, very exciting um Benley viaduct area um i've put the viaduct itself in this blue square but basically, this is just to show how brilliant the habitat is around there. The, the grasslands really well connected, the door showing up dark green, as as are the uh, the, the wetlands. So um, there's the the viaduct itself, and you, you can see the extent of of the the habitat around there. And most people will be familiar with with the viaduct. It's uh, now known by locals as the Iron Giant, and uh, there's a project to to restore the structure and get it basically opened, um, so so people can walk across it. And um, there's a French group who's uh, very, very active and, and working with the railway paths, which is part of Sustrans. Um, so um, Brinsley headstocks um, that is um, connected to the Everwash via two brooks, Brinsley Brook and Nether Green Brook. And then, in fact, that, that then plays into the Gilt Brook. So <laughs> it's connected by three brooks. Um, and um, Rockstar Borough Council, um, we've been working with them for a number of years. Uh, we're involved with um, creating a management plan for, for the site and um, working with a friends group. And um, one, of, one of the recent projects was to create some ponds in, on some low-lying um, land adjacent to the Brinsley Brook. And th these have been quite successful. Um, basically, when, when the brook dries out in the summer, th th these are creating quite, quite a nice sort of um, reservoir for, for wildlife. There's various other ponds on site. There's been some woodland work done. Um, so the um, thinning in particular, th there's some sort of planted woodlands. 
and some wet woodlands where we, we're trying to create some standing dead wood um, to um, hopefully benefit willow tit. The, um, the, the grassland areas, um, the, the quite extensive uh, sort of um, wildflower meadows have, have been created there. And um, in terms of, of the management, um, they're, they're essentially cut on an annual basis and um, hay bales are, are, are formed and they're, they're left to basically uh, sort of rot down in a sort of sacrificial area. And the, the ones here are pictured six months later. And the idea is that these will form habitat for, you know, a number of wildlife, you know, including grass snake and uh, small mammals and, and things like that. Um, Hall Park, this is an interesting and overlooked site in Eastwood. Um, and again, it's uh, it's got a tributary um, of of the Airwash, um, which is another green brook running through it. Um, part of the watercourse has got a gravelly bed, and it does support uh, native white claw crayfish. And it actually is home to a, an unusual blue variant. I've I've, I've been in, informed. Um, a kick kingfisher are present. Um, there's some really nice sort of banks, so it's it's quite possible that that they breed there. Another excellent feature of the site are the, the old veteran trees that would be fantastic for bats. Um, and then further back from the brook, um, again, there's um, quite a lot of uh, amenity grassland. There's potential for um, creating the, uh, wildflower meadows there. And there, there's also woodlands, uh, ash woodlands that, that need uh, some, some thinning to, to enhance their, their potential. Um, Collier's Wood, um, this is um, um, a, 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 another um, site that's connected. Um, it's um, open former um, former open cast mining site, and um, the the ponds actually take quite a bit of um, highway drainage, and they um, filter through to this larger pond that's pictured here, and then that goes onto the Bovale and Nevergreen and uh, Nevergreen brooks. Um, so the plantations are about twenty years old. Um, there's also um, it used to all be amenity grasslands, and now it's about 80% wildflower meadow, and the, the the public have really been on on board with that. And again, rock stove take a hay cut and um, bale it up. And this is one of the areas. In fact, I, I gave some advice, um, and um, essentially uh, um, all the, all the plantations were even aged, and I, I suggested that um, that they need to kind of um, break up the age structure and create some sort of glades. So the, the hay, hay bales have been dumped into uh, one of these sort of glade areas. And there's also been a project to remove um, 10,000 fish, goldfish, I believe, from, from the large pond, um, which had essentially e eaten all the other aquatic life there. Um, so th th there's been a lot of really good projects happening there, and there's, there's a really good friends group and a lot of community support and involvement. Um, Nottingham Canal. Um, this is that area um, that I, I showed it on an early map where you've got the Airwash Canal, the Airwash, and then the Nottingham Canal. And this clearly shows where the Nottingham Canal is in water, and then it, 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 there's a dry section sort of after that. Um, so um, it, it, in total, the local nature reserve is eight kilometres long, going from eastward to the, actually right to the edge of Beeston. Um, and it does actually take on some high highways drainage and uh, there's several feeder streams that still run into it. Um, but the, it has got that connectivity with, with the Arrowash and all the overflows make their way um, it, in, into it eventually. Um, but the, the, the pond, uh, the, um, uh, the canal is really important because it, it, it really cleans up some of these contaminated water from, from, from highways. So it's, uh, it's got a, an effective role in uh, filtering out sediment and, and pollution. Very popular site with walkers and cyclists um, and horse riders too. Um, and um, uh, Boxdale might be talking about w whether they can diversify some of the um, tow towpath um, grasslands. Um, and uh, there are some issues um, that the, the wet sections that, that often sort of occasionally spring some leaks, and that here is pictured a, a leak onto adjacent arable land. Um, but it's got a massive range of habitats, really, and even in the centre here, that's kind of more at the southern end, where it's very different in nature. It's becoming, you know, sort of 
overgrown in some senses and it takes more of the form of a series of ponds and, and a lot denser tree cover but here you've, you've got more kind of woodland birds and and, uh, and bats so um, um, yeah it's, it, it's a nice um, site. Um, totem fields um, we're heading out towards um, the the, Errol, um, to the Trent now um, and um, roughly um, I've um, highlighted totem fields with, with the blue line here. Um, the um, opportunity map uh, show, shows up the river here um, and that there's also a, a bypass channel, a river bypass channel here and it, um, this map also shows an area known as totem washlands um, that, that's really, um, in parts of wetland um, area and also there's Attenborough Nature Reserve um, and out this way is the um, of sidings which is um, the site of proposed HS2 um, hub. Um, in terms of some of the recent um, projects on Totem Fields, um, there's been a number of ponds um, sort of excavated and these have been left to sort of naturally colonise. And um, these ponds on this side, a series of three ponds that can dry out in the, or often do dry out in the summer. And that's quite good for the amphibians, really, because it, you know, wipe out any fish. So that they'll be quite, quite good for, for frogs. Um, and in fact, um, frogs have um, been recorded sp um, spawning there already. And this picture was taken on the 1st of March of, of this year. Um, so um, the future, um, I, I, I basically, um, termed um, this slide uh, threats and opportunities. So I, I briefly mentioned um, HS2 and with HS2 also um, does bring, uh, you know, sort of economic growth and associated development. So this is a master plan for some land north of Toton um, that, that, that's been um, put, put forward. So um, obviously there, there's a, a, a potential threat to the Toton fields and, and washlands that, that I've uh, mentioned and um, that there's other proposals there's um, reopening of the Maid Marion line that would connect um, Kirkby and Ashfield um, with um, so the Robin Hood line with the Arrowash Valley line and that down to the HS2. Um, there's also um, threats and opportunities um, when you look at um, restoration of mineral um, waste and open cast mining sites as well. And um, with, with all the planning stuff, it's worth bearing in mind the, um, the, the net gain that's hopefully coming in and hopefully will be a 10% minimum. Um, right. So um, other um, opportunities, um, the Environment Agency are working up um, potential for a, a, fi a, a fish pass um, at Langley Mill Weir, um, which is pictured there. Um, opportunities um, for working with Seven Trent Water. They, they do a lot of um, support, a lot of biodiversity projects, and um, also um, um, they've got a, a plan to improve their um, sewage treatment works. Um, there's obviously contrast stewardship agreements, forestry. Um, also, um, could be looking at doing more um, non native species control, um, such as mink and um, balsam. Um, another thing in the future as well could be um, carbon offsetting. Um, you know, there, there's a big drive to plant trees, um, but obviously they need to be on the right sites. Um, and wetlands as well are being increasingly recognised as uh, potential carbon sinks. So that they will have a role to play as well. Um, so um, what are we after? Essentially, um, we're after, you know, making sure that um, all aspects of the water quality in terms of water framework directive objectives are met. Um, we're looking at further enhancements for key habitats and species. And we're looking at basically um, taking on the air wash as um, a core part of a nature recovery network and actually delivering the biodiversity opportunity mapping uh, sort of on, on the ground. Um, so um, that's uh, essentially it. There's a few um, acknowledgements. Um, people sent me a lot of, kindly sent me a lot of information and photographs um, which I've used um, for the presentation. Um, so um, that's, that's about it for the, the main presentation.